Hi there and welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, this is the second take, first time I did all the questions without the microphone switching on. So, bummer. I get a lot of questions on Twitter, mostly Twitter, Facebook, in the, in the comments on the, on the YouTube channel. What video analysis program do you use? I use Longo Match. Um, if you haven't heard of it, I'll I'll put the link in the in the comments and maybe on the video somewhere. Who knows? Um, yeah, Longo Match. It's it's great. It's so simple. Um, once you get past the initial finding your way around and you know how to get things set up, it's it's really useful. Um, really simple to use. Once you're in your video, you just then have to click a button that you set to make a 10 second cut of something you've seen, something you want to then export to a video to show to your players or, or to plan your training sessions. Any plans to come back and do workshops? Uh, part of my motivation for coming to Spain and, and studying futsal is, is to grow the game in England. So yeah, one, once I have got a certain amount of knowledge that I feel I can, I can do workshops with and um, give stuff back, then, then yeah, Without a doubt, I'll be I'll be intending to do some coaching clinics. How important is learning other languages to be able to coach in different countries? Very important, and and on the other hand, you can get by without knowing the language. Now, for me, I'm here to learn, so I need to know the language. But for example, um, Miguel Rodrigo, when he went to Japan, he went with with a translator, um, but he was an established coach with with a lot of experience and the, the Japan national team has a lot of money. If your aim is to go into another country and learn and, and develop yourself then you need to know, you need to know the language. Um, and once you've learned another language you double the amount of resources you've got to learn and the amount of books you can read. I, I say double but the amount of books in Spanish is, is infinitely more than, than what we've got in English. So. I'd recommend learning Spanish for that reason alone. You've got so many resources out there, so many articles, so much research and everything that, that you can get access to. So how important is learning the languages to be able to coach in different countries? You can get by with tactics boards, with translator, with gestures, but nothing nothing really compares to, to knowing the language. Should junior futsal go on mass in winter as a break from football or grow slower but as a junior sport in its own right? Um, a couple of people asked this. Um, futsal in winter. Now, that's great because with 11, 12 weeks of football matches being cancelled, postponed, the kids can be playing. They can be training indoors, they can be playing indoors. Um, and at the same time, they can be getting introduced to, to futsal. So... I don't see any negatives in that, in that respect. Um, from a futsal coach and a futsal person's point of view, I'd like to see futsal as a sport in its own right, but we need to start somewhere. We need to be realistic, and maybe that is getting the message out there and doing the, the marketing of futsal as a winter version of football. Um, what well, we, we can get thousands of kids playing futsal in the winter, but then they need to be signposted to to their local clubs if they if they want to pursue futsal as a as a path in its own right. That could go against football clubs um, and football leagues. They're not going to like that. Because that what I've just proposed there is going to take kids away from their league. Could those leagues take advantage of that and run futsal? Maybe. But ultimately, I'd like to see futsal as a separate sport from from playing futsal in their school, which I think should be the starting point. They get signposted to their local. Futsal club who who give them opportunities to train two three times a week, matches every weekend and you know a competition to play. In. That's where I see long term junior futsal going, and that's where I'd like to see it. Will it happen? It's a whole culture change. Can it happen? It's going to be difficult, but even if it's a small a small community of futsal only coaches players administrators, teams, then you know, maybe that's what it is, maybe that's what futsal in England will be. Um, and then from there, it can grow slowly. I'd, li I'd like to see it go that way. Um, so yeah, m maybe winter futsal is a great way to start it, 
Why did you press so high versus Barca? Why didn't you choose to stay compact in your own half, which is easier to defend? He says, I, I disagree. Or, I don't, I don't think it's easier or harder. I think it's, it's your style of play. Do you play a high press because it's better for the better for the result or better for the player development? Um, okay, we pressed high against Barca because we believe in that style of play to suit our players, to suit the players we've got. We, we think we've got players that can press high. Um, I think we've got players that are on a level with the players at Barca. Um, maybe not physically, and maybe not. Maybe they they're a bit slower because of their size, but in terms of ability and, and intelligence, I think we've got an equal team. Um, so that said, if we want to use that to an advantage, pressing high for us is is our choice of a tactic. Um, if we were to sit back and defend and close, then we're going to give Barca, the, Barca and other teams the initiative. They're going to have a lot of the ball, they're going to have a lot of chances. Maybe we concede less, but I doubt we'll create as many chances. If we sit and try and counter-attack, then with with the fact that we're smaller and the players, I don't want to say slower, but not as powerful. Um, so if we if we launch counter-attack, then I'm sure the Barca players, in two or three steps, they're going to recall over to us. So that nullifies that, that threat. So if we can win the ball back high... Um, and if you watch the first half especially, you'll see that we created lots of chances from winning the ball back in the other, in the other team's half. And we could have gone in at half-time, 5-6, 3-up. Um, if we'd have sat deep, I, I maybe we'd have conceded 2-1, but I don't think we'd have created all those chances that, that we did. Um, in terms of the style of play for youth development... Yeah, still filming. In terms of the style of the play for youth development, well, the whole culture is based on youth development. It's it's, it's not a win at all cost environment. We, we, we want results, we want to win. Um, and I don't think that's a bad thing. The children are getting taught to play in a way that brings results, and that in, that in, in turn is going to develop the players. Um, but in terms of one system or another, Developing players better. I, I don't think there is there is a there is a right answer. You know, I think I think they need to experience every every type of every type of defense and, and every type of attack. So to get the best developments out of them. Where do you see the national league in three to five years, and how can it get there? I've always seen the national league in three to five years as being national, being professional, being on TV. Back when I started with Middlesbrough in two thousand eight in the in the first national league, I always thought three years time, yeah, it's going to be professional and you know it's going to be a big league. And what we're now eight years on, and I'm still getting asked the same question. Where do I see it in the next three or five years? With the restructuring at the FA, um, I, I don't know the details of that, but obviously I know that all the main staff that were there over the last few years are not there anymore. Um, the plans that got put into place maybe now are going to get put, and maybe going to get binned, maybe. So, where do I see it in three to five years? Where do I want to see it? I'd like to see it go national. I think going north and south, if we can do that, I think we can go national. Um, the outlay, the commitment of going going to London isn't much more than going to Birmingham. Um, I think I think it needs to go national. Once it's gone national we need well, at the same time we need a good brand. We need we need good marketing and a good website, good production values on filmed matches so that T V companies could be interested. But yeah, a, a really good a really good communications plan, a really good brand and a national league with with ten, twelve up to 16 clubs that, that are really ready for that, that have developed a club. Um, you know, clubs like Manchester, Sheffield, Middlesbrough, Bristol City, um, 
Baku United, Helvetia, Reading, Oxford, Loughborough University, Birmingham. All these clubs, I think, would be ready to go national. And I think they'd like to see that step. I think, I think most most clubs would like to see that. And th then those clubs need to need to drive it forward, build a fan base, and push the league as a whole. Um, but I think the marketing is key. To have a really well marketed league is is absolutely key. In three to five years, that maybe I'm maybe I'm saying the same things, but that's that's what I hope. That's my hope for the futsal the FA futsal national league. This is a good question about our training, our methodology. Um, came from Lewis Melville, a person I've respected for a long time in, in my futsal career. He was there at the start and very happy to see him doing well with, with Brentford. How much time do you spend on restarts and set pieces in training? Um, we train four and a half hours a week plus matches. Um, and every day, every session, we're working on the on the set pieces we did and now every every session we reinforce it and but the kids are now well drilled um, they know they have three or four options from from the goalkeeper which is probably the most common um, and yeah every, every session they're, they're refining that how much does winning a futsal team cost and do Middlesbrough pay first of all no Middlesbrough don't pay the, the players um, it's an amateur club the first team players generally contribute um, around the 20, 10 to 20 pounds a month mark. Um, because the costs, are, the costs are high and not a lot of money comes into a futsal club. And 5,000 pounds a year is, is probably about the minimum. Um, and that's split up into training, um, which is probably the biggest cost, away travel, another very big chunk of money. Um, and the home matches, um, you know, you're looking at about two thousand per season for each of those areas um, in Middlesbrough anyway, um, where the costs are probably lower. So yeah, it could cost up to ten thousand. Depends how many how many times you train a week. Um, but yeah, I think anywhere between five and ten thousand a season is is the cost of running the club. Um, probably in London, that's maybe fifteen to twenty thousand. And then obviously when you're looking when you're talking about the likes of Baku United, they had a, a budget of a million pounds I heard um, for for the two seasons when they were professional. So yeah, when, once you start looking at a professional setup, then it, then it's different things change. Um, and I thought about it, definitely thought about it, and, and planned it. And I think with with one hundred and fifty thousand pounds, you could run a professional team. Not with the best players, not with the top players in the world, but certainly with players that you can then ask to dedicate more time to the training, training and and the club. So yeah, anything from five thousand to a million pounds depends on what you want to do. Depends on on your ambition and and your resources you've got. Obviously, the money needs to come in. You need to get the money from somewhere to to run it. So if you can run a club for five thousand, it's it's easier. If you want to run a club for a million pounds, then then good luck in, in finding that sort of backing, which Alex at uh, uh, Baku did.